Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to write a conference paper. So my process that I go through when I'm writing a paper or working on a given project that leads to a paper. Before we get into that, I have a really quick and very exciting announcement for this channel. So if you don't want to see that, I will have the timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead. But for those of you that do want to see it, a couple of days ago, we did a live stream here on the channel. The very next day, I got access on my YouTube analytics platform to the membership option. So if you've seen on some other people's channels, they have an option for you to join the channel and become a member for a monthly fee. Typically that's reserved for people who have over 30,000 subscribers, but YouTube has offered me the chance to do this with only 3,000 subscribers. So I kind of think if you want to grow on YouTube, it's important to use whatever features they give you. So I am going to be starting that. I just have one tier at the moment. It's one euro 99 a month to support the channel and you will get access to different things. So you'll have your own emojis and badges that you can then use when you're commenting or in the live streams, in the chats, you'll have like those little badges and things like that. You'll also get access to exclusive content. So on the community tab, there will be some posts that will be for members only. For the people who don't want to go ahead and join the membership, there will still be plenty of things I'm not going to be only making members content, but it's for those people who want extra content, exclusive content that will want to sign up and join the membership. And I will also be giving away my digital downloads for my monthly planners as part of this. So you guys have probably seen my monthly plan with me videos. And since I've started using my iPad, it means that I can upload really high quality PDFs now of my spreads. So every month I'm going to be doing that and the people on the membership will have options to download those and use them either in GoodNotes or printable options or on a PDF if you can edit them yourself. The other thing that you will get is a little kind of credit in the end of my videos. So at the end of each video, I will have a thank you to all of the supporters. That's just a way for me to say thank you for supporting the channel. And I'm really excited that YouTube has given me this opportunity. I think it just shows that they think I'm doing a good job, given that it's typically for people with larger following. So I think it just shows how engaged you guys are as a community. I think it was the engagement from the live stream that really caught their attention, I think. Who knows? Anyways, let's just go with it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So as I mentioned, we're talking about what I go through in terms of writing a conference paper is the different steps. And I think this will be especially beneficial if you haven't written papers before or if you're quite new to it, because this is something that I've only learned about recently and have now followed the process, having written two papers that I've gotten accepted into conferences. And I'm now getting started with some main thesis chapters as well. I think the first step very simply is having an idea for something that you want to work on. And that might be something you get from just having your main topics and your subtopics. And maybe it's something that came to you when you were doing the readings for a given topic and you thought, oh, it would be great to work on this. So I think when you're working on a project, there's sort of three main phases. The first is the kind of solution forming phase. The second we have is actually working on that solution. And then the third is writing up everything. I will have all the timestamps linked down below if you want to just jump ahead to a certain part. So firstly, in terms of problem solving, I think generally this kind of work follows the similar pattern of creative thought. So there's four steps to this, and I've talked about this before, but I'm going to briefly go through them. So the first step you have is preparation. That's the time when you're gathering everything you need to be able to work on this pro problem. So you're reading up on the problem, you're writing up any notes for this kind of thing, any ideas you have, you're maybe sketching out the problem, trying to look at things from all the different angles and really kind of attack the problem to start. So during the preparation phase, that's when you're going to be reading up on a topic. So doing the literature review that goes along with that project. So the kind of related work section, if you like. And that's when you kind of understand what's been done so far, as well as what still needs to be done and ensure that A, your problem hasn't been solved, but B, just to check out the different solutions that have been tried. So during the preparation stage, that might also be a good time to write up your literature review for that topic, your related work section, because it's 
easy to get this out of the way and then not have to worry about it later on. Usually during this phase, you'll hit a wall where you just can't think anymore about the problem and you just can't come up with your solution. So then you move on to the incubation phase. During this phase, you will typically need to take some time away from the problem, take some restful breaks. So going for walks can be a great way to do that. And maybe even taking a few days off. And this is very important because your subconscious mind will work away at problems in the background, but only if you give it enough rest. And you really need that rest for the solutions to be generated and for them to start coming up to the surface into the conscious mind. Once you've allowed that to happen, you will move on to phase three, which is illumination. And this is when you have that sort of aha moment or the light bulb goes off in your head and you think that's the solution. So that can only happen again when you have sufficient rest and time away from the problem if the solution originally isn't becoming clear to you. Then you'll have some idea of what a possible solution could be. And the last step here is verification. So testing out whether that solution is actually correct. And typically you will go through a couple of these cycles throughout a project until you find the correct solution. That's sort of moving on to the second overall step, which is actually working on the solution. So that might be longer or shorter. It really depends on the kind of project you have. So for me with computer science, I'll typically have a number of different models that I try out throughout the course of a project. And these different models will come to me at different points and then I will try them out, see if they work, see if they improve my accuracy. And if not, it's sort of back to square one. And that's typically how it goes for me. And eventually I will get to a point where I'm happy with the final solution. Then I will sort of stop the problem solving phase of the project work. So once you've gotten to solutions that you're comfortable with, I do think it's good to be discussing this with your supervisor along the way. So what I typically do is each time I've worked through one potential solution, I then present the results of that to my supervisor, potentially offer him a suggestion of the next thing that I'm going to try and we'll typically work like that and he will always offer a lot of really helpful advice for different things that would be good to try or maybe not so good to try and I do think it's a good thing to kind of get into the habit of working with your supervisor in a regular pattern throughout project work because it's just a lot easier than when you're both on the same page so we would typically work pretty well together in that way and work on the solutions together so then you'll get to a point you're happy with your solution and you've worked on it you've collected all of the extra data that you need at the end to write up any experiments. So for us, again, with computer science, there'll be the modeling phase. And then there's sort of the evaluation phase where you have all of these different graphs you might want to have to show that your solution works in a number of different ways. That's sort of an additional step. And it really depends on the kind of work you're doing. You might have extra steps in there. So far, we've gone through the preparation phase, which would have been all the reading that you needed to do. We've come up with a solution that we're happy with and a, potentially some alternative solutions if yours is the kind of project where you would want to show the different options that you went through along the way. And then now we've come up with our final solution or our best model, depending on what kind of work you're doing. Now we're kind of in the evaluation stage. So this is when we're getting all of the different graphs we need to show that our, our solution works for the problem in a number of different ways and that it's a robust solution. Then we move on to writing the paper. I think it depends whatever works best for you in terms of writing, but what works works well for me and what I know has worked well for other people is starting off with the easier sections in a sense. But typically the methodology section is the easiest one to write because you've already done it. So you've already done the methods, you went through the whole steps we were talking about before. So it's easy to write up what's been done already. So that's where I would start if I were you, is start up writing the methodology section. And that kind of goes for any other thesis that you'll be writing. If you have individual chapters with the separate sections, or if you're writing like a master's dissertation, the easiest thing to start with is your methodology section. After that, the next one that's easiest to do is your analysis or results or evaluation section, whichever one you have. People use different terminology for different fields. So we would typically have our methodology, and then our evaluation section. So you might have results or analysis. That's also an easy one to do because you've got all of these graphs that you've built in the last steps to showcase that your solution works. And now it's just a case of explaining the results, what you found and sort of relate it to the graphs or whatever it is that you have. So both of those sections are really easy to kind of get started with. So you should already have your related work section written up from the preparation phase. So now we have three sections, related work, methodology, 
methodology and your results slash evaluation. Next thing you want to do is go for the introduction and discussion. Now it's up to you which one you want to write first. It just depends whichever one you find easier. I would personally write the discussion first and then the introduction. Sometimes I wouldn't have a specific discussion section. I would just incorporate it into the evaluation section and then have a longer conclusion. The introduction is often the hardest one to write. A lot of people have said this and from my experience I find it to be that way as well because it's hard to know how to tie up everything in the beginning when you haven't done the work. So I think it's easier to do it at the end and then you'll know what's kind of good information to provide in the introduction to really tie people in. Lastly, we have our abstract and conclusion. And again, I like to write these both together just so that they link in well. And the abstract, even though it's only short, it can be difficult to get everything across in a clear and concise way. So I do have a separate video about writing abstracts if you want to see that. And I also have separate videos on lit reviews that are more related to the thesis, but probably would be equally helpful for any given conference paper or journal paper, depending on what you're working on. Again, the formats will depend on your field, on the kind of conference you're submitting to, and you need to be careful that you look at the typical ways that they're structured for the specific conference that you're going to submit to. Usually you will have previous examples from that conference and they will typically also have a latex package that you can use for when you're writing up your paper. Whether you're using latex or Word docs or pages, there should be a template that you can use that will make everything really easy. It's also good to keep your supervisor in the loop when you're writing up the paper. It does depend on your relationship with your supervisor and what they prefer, but typically I would also include them on the LaTeX document just so that they can oversee whatever I'm working on, kind of offer advice and things like that. That is it for this video. It was just a breakdown of the different steps that I follow. So if you're completely new to writing papers, I think this will be very helpful and I hope that it is. So if you enjoyed this video, then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more PhD related content.